In this lab, we'll be using gel electrophoresis to study forensic biology. Our research question is, can we determine which suspect was at the scene of a crime using sample DNA evidence? Our basic learning goals for this week is to uh, have students be able to explain how gel electrophoresis works, what physical characteristics would cause bands of DNA to appear in different locations within a lane on a gel, and to use a spectrophotometer to quantify the concentration of poison from a crime scene. So we're going to be given some samples of DNA. So just to give you some background, if this were an actual crime scene, first the DNA would be collected from the crime scene, then the DNA would be amplified, um, and then you would analyze that DNA using gel electrophoresis like we're doing this week. And in order to do that, to do that, you need to have DNA that tends to vary among individuals. So for example, the DNA that codes for catalase, that enzyme we studied a few weeks ago, it would be pretty much the same in every individual because catalase can't vary uh, too much without failing to function. So the DNA that codes for catalase won't vary a whole lot among individuals. So we'll, we'll need to look for areas of DNA that varies quite a bit among individuals if we're going to use DNA evidence to distinguish between people. In order to do that, we use something that will have already been done for us, but PCR, or polymerase chain reaction. And just to give that to you in a nutshell what this means, um, we take DNA and we add some nucleotides, the, the raw materials of DNA, as well as DNA polymerase, which is an enzyme that builds DNA. We heat the DNA up to 95 degrees Celsius, which causes it to separate. The two strands break apart. And we add primers to the area that we want to, co that we want to copy. So those primers adhere, thanks to complementary base pairing, to specific areas of the DNA. Then the polymerase attaches to those primers, kind of like the little tab at the bottom of your zipper. When you uh, take your zipper and you attach it to that little tab, the primer allows uh, DNA polymerase to attach to the DNA, and it copies that region of DNA. And then, when that's done, you have two pieces of DNA that have now been copied. You then heat it up again and repeat the process over and over again, and eventually you have a highly concentrated solution of your targeted DNA sequence. So then, you, uh, what you do is you make a gel. And a gel is made from agarose, which is basically kind of like gelatin made from a, a red algae. And DNA's phosphate sugar backbone has a negative charge. Therefore, if you stick an electrical current in this gel after you've added DNA, the negative DNA will be pulled towards the positive charge of the electrical current. And that will cause big pieces and small pieces of DNA to separate out over time. So what happens is you add the, the DNA to the, uh, to the gel up here in this area we call the wells. And each, this is showing A, B, C, D, E, F. Those are called lanes. So this lane would have a sample of DNA in it. Well, B would have a sample of DNA in it, and so on and so forth. And in this case, we have DNA with, or, or several fragments of DNA, just so you can kind of get a visual here. And remember, the phosphate group is negative, so it will be drawn towards the positive end of the uh, electrical circuit here. And the biggest pieces of DNA move a shorter distance. Let's say you turn this on for an hour. The bigger pieces of DNA will get uh, only a little ways away from the uh, well, while the smaller pieces of DNA will travel much further. Remember, they're smaller. The D there's a smaller number of base pairs. Remember, base pairs are the A, T, C's, and G's, how many of those there are in that fragment. If there's fewer base pairs, they bump into the gel less often, and they get further in, in that amount of time than a larger or longer piece of DNA would get. So we're going to practice loading our gels today with some practice DNA and a rubber practice gel. And let me just emphasize when we do this, do not throw away your practice gel when you're done. They're very expensive. Thank you. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to have several uh, lanes. We're going to have a ladder. And a ladder is 
um, a sample you'll add to your gel that contains known pieces of DNA. So pieces of DNA of known lengths. So you'll have them to compare as a standard to the rest of your samples. So it's kind of like the legend on a map. If a piece of DNA, let's say the crime scene had one piece of DNA that moved this far, you would be able to tell that that piece of DNA was about 6,700 base pairs long. Okay, so it's kind of like your, your legend or your scale. You're going to have crime scene DNA and then DNA from three suspects. You're also going to have uh, some Gatorade that may have been poisoned from the crime scene and you're going to use your spectrophotometer to analyze that Gatorade. So as a table, you'll have to decide what will you blank with um, and how will you find that poison and, and how will you tell if it's a fatal dose or not. So you're going to need to use that um, Lambert Beer equation again. But we're going to have a different constant this week and that's in your lab manual. So I won't cover it too much here. So when we're done, we're going to have a gel that has the ladder on it and has crime scene suspect one, suspect two, and suspect three DNA on it. You're going to determine who was likely at the crime scene, who likely committed the crime, and you're also going to determine um, if poison was administered by the suspect, uh, if there was poison Gatorade found at the crime scene, and if it was a fatal dose or not. Can we charge the suspect with attempted murder or just with uh, poisoning to make make the uh, victim sick, or uh, you know, are we going to put him away for a long time? So that'll be up to you to determine as the forensic scientist this week in lab. So, make sure you read over the lab manual and any required readings that it mentions there, and also do the pre-lab quiz, and I will see you very soon.